is. Howdy, howdy. Welcome to another delightful installment of the extraterrestrial comedy podcast known as But It Was Aliens. Today's host is yours truly, Moon Walker. And sitting directly across from me, as always, is the equally delightful Kevin the Grey. Beard. <laughs> How are you today, young Kevin? Debating bleach in my bumhole. <coughs> Why? Because I don't want a grey beard anymore. You'll always be grey beard. Today, I'm going to regale you with a little tale. You're not even going to question the fact I've suggested I've got a beard on my bumhole. This is you. <laughs> I, I've learned to not question things and just accept that they are. Okay. So, I'm going to regale you with a little tale. And by tale, I mean 100% fact-based account of something extraterrestrial. As always. Shall we proceed? Absolutely. We're taking to the skies, my friends. The skies over Washington. Kenneth Arnold, an aviator and businessman. He's had over 9,000 hours of flying. Hot damn, that's a lot of flying. That's a lot more than the last pilot we covered. <laughs> a lot more. We've had about nine. <laughs> and failed all his exams. Yeah. Valentique or Valentine. One or the other. Valentich. However it's pronounced. We probably had First that debate Frederick. in the episode. <laughs> yeah, Fred. Fred. Good old Fred. With nearly half of those being with search and rescue. So he's a very competent pilot. There's no record of him failing multiple tests and exams. <laughs> And he is also born on March 29th, so shares a birthday with a very good friend of mine. And also March is a great month. You could also argue it's the best month. Uh, I, say, argue. I say argue, you can't argue it. You it can. is the best month. I think a lot of people are probably going to be quite fond of December, to be fair. Why? Because they get presents. Nothing happens in December. Yeah, yeah October's better, to be fair, yeah. Oktoberfest. Frost! So on June 24th, during Kenneth's 32nd year of life, he was making a business trip from Chehalis, Washington to Yakima, Washington in a Cal Air A2. Neither of those places sound like they are in Washington. I know, right? <laughs> Chehalis, was that, sorry? That's the one. And Yakima. Sounds very is this, American. Is this USA, Washington? or is this It a- is. Okay. During this flight, he made a brief detour as there were reports of a missing plane. Not just any plane, but a US Marine Corps C-46 transport plane, which had crashed close to Mount Rainer, and the reward for spotting it was $5,000, which is the equivalent of $57,000 today. So you can see why old Kenneth took a detour for that sweet, sweet loot. Before I continue, is there anything you would like to ask him? So he'd spent a lot of those 9,000 hours in search and rescue. Mm-hmm. Was he an official search and rescue, or did he just get wind of missing planes as he was travelling elsewhere and go have a little snout because he was nosy? Official. He, or he wasn't looting? Wasn't looting. You're sure? Kind of sure. You did just say that he took a detour for that sweet, sweet <laughs> loot. He did. <laughs> but he's not looting. Well, if you were walking down the street, say, for example, near a park, and you were told that there was a missing bike, for example, in that park yeah. that was worth 10 grand to the person that found it, you've, you've got time. Would you not just take a detour and walk through that park just to see if you can find it? If I was looking to... Sweet, <laughs> sweet loot. So there are two options there if I do choose to go and find it. I'm either trying to help out the person who has lost it, in which case I would suggest that I'm not looting, I'm search and rescuing. (laughs) (laughs) Or I could try to find it and take it for my own, in which case I am sweet, sweet looting. So would you keep the bike or hand it in for the £10,000? Hand it in for £10,000? Well, if you find it, it's ten grand. Yeah, but it's worth ten grand. No, you get ten grand. Mm. So you just walking on by or are you just going to have a quick detour to see if you can find it so he's a search and rescue looter if they took the money away would he still be doing it probably not mm, well, i've lost faith in this man <laughs> please continue with this twat the skies were clear the weather was good but there was no sign of the plane 
So around three o'clock, sitting at 9,200 feet, that's 2,800 meters, Kenneth gave up. Now, I know a Kenneth that wouldn't give up. <laughs> <laughs> He's tenacious. He does not stop. Never wins. But you got to give him his dues. He tries. Isn't that right, Kenny? <laughs> I love his backhanded compliments <laughs> when he's losing. <laughs> so Kenny changed course and headed towards Yakima. Shortly after, he caught a flash of light in his left mirror. Worried he may be too close to another craft, Kenny scans his surroundings, but all he could see was another plane about 15 miles, which is 24 kilometers behind him on his left. Are we sure that was a plane? <laughs> <laughs> sure that's a plane. 30 seconds later, he sees an upper series of bright flashes to his left. He assumes they could be a reflection on his windows, so decides to test it. Smart boy. Mm. He rocks the plane from side to side, removes his eyeglasses. <laughs> I'm confused. I'm just laughing at the fact that people call them <laughs> eyeglasses rather than just glasses. Would you wear glasses elsewhere on your body? Not that I know of. Mm. Just tickled me. Me too. Still, they were still there, so he checks once more by rolling the side window down. Nope, these things were still there, but our boy doesn't panic. He tries to come up with a conclusion. A conclusion, so he's not interested in getting away from whatever this flash is. Nope. He just wants to conclude on what it is. He's brave. Kenny the Brave. He's going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to lose bravely. First, he thinks it could be a flock of geese or some kind of bird, but rules that out due to both the speed they were travelling and that they gave off a glint. He thinks maybe it's a jet of some kind, but then realises that it doesn't have a tail. Ooh. Kenny's going to be like, you fly better than I was expecting for a beginner. <laughs> maybe I'll try harder next time. <laughs> yeah. I was going to take it easy on you. <laughs> As he's being shot down. <laughs> At this point... <laughs> oh, I could have had you. I should have had you. You got lucky. At this point, they weren't far from Mount Rainer, approximately 20 to 25 miles away. As they got closer, the objects passed in front of him. Against the snowy backdrop of Mount Rainer, they appeared dark, but gave off flashes of brightness as they flipped around erratically, sometimes appearing on their side and when they did, they were barely visible. But there was one that was different. This one was crescent shaped, like the actual shape, not the Gene Simmons with tits looking alien <laughs> from episode one. Gene Simmons with tits. Uh, <laughs> do you know what, since we've covered that case of Huggins, I found another painting that he'd done of him sucking on the tit of crescent. I remember you showing me a baby that one. in yeah. his arms. It's just so wrong. It's baffling. However, upon seeing this, it gave him an eerie feeling. Kenny thought that he may have just witnessed a new military craft being tested. It's a logical conclusion. Kenny the Brave is also logical. Indeed he is. Kenny the Brave and logical. Kenny logic. The finest logic. And Kenny turned his plane southwards so that he was pretty much on a parallel course with the objects. He wound down his side window and observed them. The objects continued to move rapidly southwards continuously moving from his position. Kenny decided that he would try to work out their speed, so he timed them. Logical again. Kenny. Indeed. You deep thinker. They moved from Mount Rainer to Mount Adams, where they faded from view, which was about 50 miles away. That's 80 kilometers. In one minute, 42 seconds. Whoa. When he later did the calculations... That's going to be bloody... That's going to be thousands of miles. Sorry. <laughs> I started mapping in my head. <laughs> when he later did the calculations, he worked out it was over 1,700 miles per hour. That's 2,700 kilometers. I took a pencil and worked out the calculations myself by typing them into Google. And the actual speed is 1,754.45 miles an hour. Not knowing where the objects exactly faded out of view, Kenny rounded his speed down to 1,200 miles per hour. That's 1,900 kilometers. 
which by official records wasn't beaten until nearly 20 years later by Alvin S. White and Carl Cross who flew a North American XB-70 Valkyrie at 2,020 miles per hour. That's 3,250 Is that not basically a warhead? These guys flew a warhead. <laughs> what the hell? I've got to say, I'm surprisingly impressed with Kenny's logic here. He's unflappable at the moment. You proper shit talking him at the start oh i'm giving sure him jib. <laughs> i'm sure he's gonna make me regret this support <laughs> he's seeing crescent lights in the sky and he's not really sure he's guessing that they're military vehicles which is a again a logical guess he's also wondered if they could be geese mm-hmm. has he wondered if they could be marks on his screen yeah he said because he rolled the plane oh he done the windows and, and also and... done the windows and stuff hmm those were the first things he done. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, things have happened since then. But yeah, that's pretty swift. It's not the fastest thing we've come across on this show, but it's still strangely quick. At that time. And to it, be fair, 20 years later, we hit that speed publicly. It could be military tests. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Kenny is logical. I mean, it might not be. It might be robot geese, but time will tell. Kenny reached the Akima around four o'clock. His friend Al Baxter, who also (laughs) happened to be airport general manager, was told what he had seen. This news spread like wildfire around the airport. I bet. And before long, all the staff knew about it. Al Baxter couldn't keep his mouth closed. (laughs) No, he couldn't. He chatted with them for a while before leaving and flying to Pendleton, Oregon, to an air show. However... He wasn't aware that they had been called and briefed on the fact that he'd seen some strange new aircraft by someone from Yakima. He wrote a report to AAF Intelligence and added that he'd spoken to a few pilot friends who didn't scoff or laugh and suggested that maybe he'd seen a guided missile or some type of new craft, something he'd assumed himself. He also added that a few former army pilots told him that they would be briefed before going into combat that they may see similar shaped objects to those that he described and assured him he wasn't going crazy. I'd like that in writing. From the military, please. That's basically the military admitting to holding... I'm going to say UFO tech, but I'm not suggesting otherworldly UFO tech. Just tech that isn't public knowledge. Not necessarily holding it, but letting them know that there may be stuff out there. Hmm. Which means, do they have a agreement? So they've either got the tech aliens? or they're aware of tech. Just can't trust the bloody military, can you? <laughs> Things were moving fast, and the next day, Kenny was interviewed by the media. It was at the offices of the East Oregonian Oregonian in Pendleton that the interview with reporters took place. They interviewed him at length. Apparently, any scepticism they may have had was dispelled as they listened to him talk. Newspapers started running with the terms flying saucer or flying disc. I bet. And it's this sighting by Kenny which is credited with making these terms popular. Really? Yep. Mike Dash in Borderlands, the ultimate exploration of the unknown, records, and I quote, I know it had to make it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I was expecting I wanted to pop you then. Sometimes you're really reluctant to put on voices, (laughs) so I just wasn't expecting that at all. (laughs) Because it's such a long paragraph, I don't know if I'll be able to keep the voice up. Oh, you can keep it up. Have faith in Damn your right ability. I <laughs> Arnold had the makings of a reliable witness. He was a respected businessman, an experienced pilot, and seemed to be neither exaggerating what he had seen, nor adding sensational details to his report. He also gave the impression of being a careful observer. <laughs> a careful observer! <laughs> These details impressed the newspaperman who interviewed him and lent credibility to his report. <laughs> Why did I start laughing halfway through? Because what? I rolled my ass. <laughs> you started turning Russian is what you did. <laughs> Every time you put on a voice for more than a few seconds, it starts turning Russian. Oh, it can stay as it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> These details impressed me. <laughs> 
No more than two days later, and Kenny had had enough. He hated all the snap? attention. Did he Kenny snap? Does Kenny snap, though? What? <laughs> That's not really a snap. It's a Kenny snap. <laughs> That's his psych breaking, because he can't process that he's lost. I'll tell you what a Kenny snap is. Hammering his fists on the table. <laughs> Knocking everyone's drinks over and then blaming someone else. The whole room, about eight <laughs> people saw him do it. Yeah, he's adamant to this day that it wasn't him. <laughs> Good luck with that one, Kenny. All right, let me get back. No more than two days later and Kenny had had enough. He hated all the attention he was getting and who could blame him? He was called by a preacher and told that the objects he saw were the harbingers of doomsday. That's a bit heavy. And that the preacher was preparing his congregation for the end of the world. Are you sure that wasn't like a cult leader? <laughs> that does not sound like a standard preacher. It's quite possible. Imagine if you were going to a, like, a nice friendly church, you're in sermon one day, and <laughs> the preacher... It's the harbingers of doom! <laughs> he goes from saying you've got to be friendly to your neighbours and whatnot, and handing out bread... <laughs> you know we're all gonna die The harbinger of doom are coming <laughs> A woman noticed him in a calf And ran out shrieking There's the man that saw the man from Mars Oh that's gonna stick isn't it He's reported saying that the whole thing Has gotten out of hand And that he wants to talk to the FBI And this is a quote From Kenny Half the people look at me as a combination of Einstein Flash Gordon and Screwball. I wonder what my wife back in Idaho thinks. Einstein and Flash Gordon. That's one <laughs> hell of a combination. That's like a superhero. I suppose they were, apart from Einstein being big, Flash Gordon probably would have been huge. Oh, remind me, what year is this again? It was a year. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to put it in, but I'm pretty sure it is around the time that Flash Gordon was popular. Uh, I really need to know what year it is, because you said earlier on that this started off the term Flying Saucer, oh, okay. which was hold, going around since 1947. You so, bitch. Let me check my notes. It's got to be from. pre-war, surely. 20s? It's going to be like 1985, isn't it? <laughs> 2006. 1947. It was 47. Mm -hmm. Ah. So was this just before Roswell? Same year. Roswell was July. Okay. Interesting. And news travelled quickly. I wonder if this one influenced Roswell. In terms of? People went absolutely bonkers when Roswell happened. Like it was all over the news for years afterwards. But did this one put it in people's minds? And then made them literally go nuts. So they already Roswell. had flying saucers in the mind... And Whether it was a saucer happened. or a weather balloon, it was in people's minds to be a saucer. And oh, yeah. then that was like, that pushed it global when it could have, like, had that not have happened first, Roswell might not have made as big as a splash. Kenny was receiving lots of fan mail from people eager to help get to the bottom of what he saw. Some thought it to be a religious interpretation, whilst others thought he could be seeing some kind of visitation from some otherworldly being. This was also starting to become Kenny's train of thought too, and he made the incredibly smart move of buying a video camera to try and capture them if he saw them again whilst flying, so that he would have photographic evidence. Smart. Smart, Kenny. Kenny's a real thinker. I'm surprised. Me too. I keep on thinking you're going to like pull the rug from underneath me at some point, but he just keeps on acting in the right way and he's not <laughs> doing anything that makes him less credible. Good old Kenny. Mm. In another interview with the Chicago Times, Kenny states that he's not certain that the objects came from this world, although it is something he'd, he really hoped for. So he wanted them to be military? Mm. Okay. But he says that if the government knew anything about them, they should let the people know. If they are from another planet, he believes it would be wrong to shoot them down because they weren't hurting anyone. He also wonders if it could be done due to the speed of them. Hmm. He goes on to say that the discs were making turns so abruptly in rounding peaks that it would have been impossible for human pilots to survive the pressure created inside. And that's why he thinks it could have been controlled from elsewhere, another planet, or even from Earth. So rounding peaks, 
that doesn't mean like complete stop dead and turn that just means really quick turn Okay, I'm leaning more towards military than aliens on that note. In an article in the Saturday Evening Post titled What Can You Believe About Flying Saucers? Kenny says, and I quote, Since my first Ah. observations... (laughs) I knew you were waiting. (laughs) Since my first observations... I'm a point of the circle of flying discs, (laughs) son of a bitch. (laughs) That'll fucking teach you to drink while I'm talking. (laughs) Ah, it's got in the roll. (laughs) Tyler, your sex tape. <coughs> you done? Since my first observations and report of the so-called flying discs, I have spent a great deal of money and time thoroughly investigating the subject. There is no doubt in my mind, but what these objects are is aircraft of a strange design and material that is unknown to the civilization of this earth. Not yet convinced? Let me present you with some eyewitness accounts. Ooh. Prospector Fred Johnson, a gold man, was on Mount oh, Adams and he wrote to AAF Intelligence saying that he saw six objects on the same day and same time as Kenny. He looked at them through a telescope and described them as round and tapered, sharply to a point in the head and in an oval shape. These things also messed with his compass. The- oh. <laughs> That's unusual. The AAF conducted a witness interview and concluded that he was a credible witness to what he'd seen. This account would actually be the AAF's first unexplained UFO report in the Air Force files as they simply brushed Kenny's off as a mirage. They didn't even think that Fred's was a continuation of it. So they think these are two different reports and they're saying the witness is the right one or a real one. This one came in before Kenny's, but everything that he says he saw... Oh, I thought it came out after in support of Kenny's. Sorry, I misinterpreted. So it came in before, but everything that he saw was at the same time as Kenny. Mm. And they brushed Kenny's off as a mirage. The Portland, Oregon Journal announced that they'd received a letter from an L.G. Bernier claiming that they'd seen three strange objects fly over Richland, which was 110 miles east of Mount Adams and 140 miles southeast of Mount Rainer. They said that the objects flew almost edgewise towards Mount Rainer and it was time stamped 30 minutes before Kenny saw them. Mr. Bernier also mentioned their speed, saying that he'd seen a P-38 move at incredible speed and that these objects moved faster than that. And the top speed of a P-38 at the time is around 440 miles per hour. There are also more sightings from locations nearby from people seeing objects moving at ridiculous speeds and around the same time too. But the main one to take note of came 10 days later when a United Airlines crew spotted five to nine disc-shaped objects pace their plane for 10 to 15 minutes before disappearing is there a military airfield nearby not that i'm aware of but i didn't look into it to see if there was one the sighting with the magnetism is the most interesting to me but the fact there is so many sightings over a few week period suggests to me that maybe there's some sort of testing site nearby why would aliens be flocking around the same place for several weeks floating by every single plane and whatnot that goes by surely they'd broaden their horizons but that magnetism one is unusual i can't recall too many where that's happened did a lot of these sightings all come out after the one that made the papers saying flying saucers and whatnot though were there by the one with the airplane they were all i think they'd been sent before kenny's but because of the time and letters yeah they were published after but got sent around the same time so it's not as if they saw kenny's and was like oh, i'm gonna write in after but then one of them said that the sighting was 10 days later yeah that's the airplane so i wonder again whether there are planes and whatnot perhaps military technology in the skies around this area but now sources are on people's minds so they weren't before hits the papers now everything's a saucer i see where you go Hmm. this kind of sighting is going to bring the big guns to the table and to the table they came kenny was interviewed by military lieutenant frank brown 
and Captain William Davidson. Remember, Kenny has submitted a report already at this point. Mm -hmm. After the interview, the interviewers had this to say. It is the present opinion of the interviewer that Mr. Arnold actually saw what he stated he saw. It is difficult to believe that a man of his character and apparent integrity would state that he saw objects and write up a report to the extent that he did if he did not see them. Hmm. And this is coming from military. After they spoke to him. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Anything to add? <laughs> or were you just humming? <laughs> I thought it was going on. But oh, I, was I was just going to say, just because you hummed. I was just going to say, it's interesting because before, oh no, he said it was geese, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, he thought it might be. Yeah. They thought it was a mirage. Yeah. So they were saying it was a mirage and now they're saying that he's of integrity and he's believed. So yeah, he, Kenny the Brave. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm quite on board with Kenny seeing something. I haven't got anything about him yet to sink my teeth into and suggest that he's a dirty boy. Okay. You'll remember earlier that they dismissed this as Kenny seeing a mirage. This must be what it's like for our Kenny, constantly seeing a mirage. <laughs> I feel for the kid. His brother is a saint for putting up with him. A saint. Always thinking that he wins when he doesn't. The mirage. Get your eyes tested, Kenny. On July 9th, the AAF, with help from the FBI, began a secret investigation into the best of the reports which came in regarding the object. Kenny's report was amongst them. Several weeks later, they came to the conclusion that something real, real, was flying around out there. This laid the groundwork for another intelligence estimate in September that same year by General Nathan Twining. This Sounds like a Star Wars character who loves cups of tea. Ah. Hello there, General Nathan Twining. Fancy some tea? <laughs> I don't remember any Star Wars character sounding like that. You want some tea? Hmm? <laughs> what about that? Oh, the one in the new one with the goggles that gives Ray the lightsaber. I have no idea what she sounds oh, like. Oh, but... God. I can't remember the name. I just started thinking of, that's a trap! No. This concluded that the sources were real and urged a formal investigation by multiple government agencies. This birthed the formation of a new task force, Project Sign. Project Sign then ended up becoming Project Grudge. I feel like I know where this is going. Bit aggressive. Not sure why they're holding a grudge. Wow. And then Project Grudge became Project Blue Book. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you said Project 1 became Project 2, <laughs> I was thinking, I know what the end project's going to be here. It's around the same sort of time. And according to Major Edward J. Rupel, there seemed to be two trains of thought. One, what Kenny saw was either a formation of jets. Two, that the first one is bullshit because Kenny was able to time them. That's <laughs> that's what the conclusions yeah. were, is it? <laughs> they thought he saw jets and then the others thought that's bullshit because he was able to time so them. So in their several hundred page reports, the final concluding line <laughs> is that our first conclusion is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and there was another theory that was kicking around that what he'd seen was snow swirls from the mountains. Oh, is that a thing? It is. So yeah, they thought it may have been snow swirls from the mountains. When Edward asked Air Force investigators, he got told that's impossible. Interesting. I've Yeah, I've never seen a snow swirl <clears throat> around the mountains, to be fair. Um, I did have a look at pictures of it, and there is they do look quite mental, but not to the description that he's providing. Like, they look nothing Yeah, like but it. then you've got to remember, he's moving very fast in a plane, so things are going to look a little bit different. That's true, but are they really going to go from behind him or beside him to in front of him and then completely disappear? Depends. Has he turned his plane? <laughs> <laughs> the thing I'm holding on to in my mind here is the speed of them. Whilst they are very quick, they're not anywhere near as quick as the other alien crafts we've covered they're actually going at speeds that we can that we have superseded with subsequent technology and 
the military will generally use technology that doesn't come out into the mainstream for a decade two decades whatever later so yeah that's i've got that in the back of my mind i think he is a really credible guy but i've got some logic going on alongside that and i've got a bit of cognitive dissonance going on now this is the part of the podcast where we turn to skeptics Stuart campbell and donald menzel both suggest that kenny saw snow blowing off of mount rainer with campbell going on to say that, that kenny possibly saw a mirage and that the objects were travelling at the same speed as Kenny. Philip J. Class, Ooh. the curse master himself, <laughs> suggested that he mistook the objects for meteors oh, that he always, were falling. He bloody always says that. James Easton believes that what Kenny saw was pelicans. Pelican! Which have large wingspans and have a pale underbelly which can reflect light and can appear to be crescent-shaped when flying. That's a fair comment, but... They're going a little bit quick, aren't they? They are. I've never seen a pelican going 1,545 miles per hour, whatever it was. <laughs> 1,754.45. Oh, but then you worked out, didn't you, to be slightly different? Mm-hmm. Throughout the years, Menzo has come up with a few differing theories, as well as the snow one. He thinks Kenny may have seen either orographic or wave clouds, which were the types of fucking bastard. <laughs> They were types of fucking bastard. So the <laughs> orographic or wave clouds I did have a look at. Yeah. They are not, they don't look anything like what was described. They are formed by, I think it was cold and hot air. So when snow at the top of mountains and stuff like that. Mm. Again, this was so long ago, I can't remember it. But I definitely know I looked into it. And again, it's not, to me, it's not one of those. And then eight years later, he tried to claim that Kenny saw spots of water on his window. <laughs> so it's not often that the skeptics' theories have been debunked by Bruce McCarb, who simply used common sense. He says that meteors would require incredibly slow speeds yeah. and duration. Birds wouldn't be as bright as Kenny explained. Not only that, but they wouldn't be travelling at speeds that he claimed either. They would be travelling backwards, steadily, relative to Kenny's position, and that the clouds would have had a hazy light, unlike the bright light reported, and also Kenny reported a clear sky. Yeah, the meteor one, I thought that's a bullshit excuse straight away. Pelicans, if pelicans were going that quick, man, we should ride them. A pelican. The new form of travel. Why is no one... Wondering about military technology. Are they all in on it and trying to cover it up or something? I don't think they are. It's such a clear outcome. Why is nobody thinking about it? I mean, that's some pretty insane military tech, though, isn't it? Well, it's not. That's the thing. We were doing this commercially within 20 years. Mm, Yeah, that's true. But then we've never... The shapes that is explaining... I don't think we've ever seen crafts of that shape. What shape? The circular Mm. Yeah, drones. You think about it. Missiles sent in the war are basically giant drones. I've never seen a circular drone. I saw one in uh, Smith's toy shop about a month ago. (laughs) Was it a drone? (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) What's that film? Are you sure you were in Smith's toy shop? Was it batteries not included with the little aliens that were crafts? Is it something else? Oh, I forget. Regardless, I think I was in a shop. Are you sure? That I was in a shop? Yes. I'm fairly certain. Are you sure? I can remember driving there. Do you remember driving home? Yes. <laughs> Were you probed? Definitely not. I had no anal discomfort that day, that week, that month. That year? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that year. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a lot of nice evidence here, but I feel like they're all completely ignoring what's right in front of them, potentially. And, and military craft. Yeah, we were experimenting, well, not even just us, like, this is two years after World War II, when all sorts of crazy technology was being tested on. This is the hot point of experimental craft, wasn't it? 40s to, like, the 80s. In my head, I'm trying to think if there was any wars um, between then and the 20 years after... Or the Cold War went where on for... They would have used an official those war, speeds. But... Like where they would have used crafts of those speeds. Well, they wouldn't necessarily have had to use them. They were just testing them because America mm. thought they were going to go to war with Russia at any point. Or was it the Soviet Union still then, wasn't it? Mm. And they're 
there are wars all over the world constantly. We covered it in a previous one, didn't we? There's Man, been we did. hundreds and hundreds of wars. Loads that we and did. And then no Vietnam wasn't too long after this either, which, interestingly, they don't really teach you about in England. After everything you've heard in this file today, Kevin, what are you saying? Do we get to hear those four magic words? <laughs> Inside your butthole. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that it was aliens, but it was credible. <laughs> Did you tingle a little bit there? No. <laughs> yeah, as I, I've pretty much explained before getting to the clu- conclusion, to be honest, I've kind of convinced myself more talking about it at the end there. I think the guy is really credible. It's interesting that there are a lot of witnesses, but that's not to say that all the witnesses themselves were credible, and I get the suspicion that this was... Well, actually, I don't get the suspicion. I know for a fact that the world went bonkers on UFOs in the late 40s onwards, really, for about 30 years, and they all came in quick succession of one another. Meanwhile, as we've said, the world, all the significant powers in the world were experimenting on military technology. A lot of Germans have been brought over to America to work on rocket technology and whatnot, building towards the moon landing, if you believe that shit. (laughs) And yeah, there's, there's not enough juice on this one for me. Again, I think he might have seen something. I'm not saying that he didn't. I'm just not convinced that what he saw was alien tech because it's so close to what we could soon after do with human tech. To convince me it would have needed to be a little bit more extravagant. It would need to have been turning on the spot, going hundreds of thousands of miles rather than just over a thousand miles or whatever agreed but for me it wasn't aliens <laughs> i pretty much I thought... came up <laughs> sorry go on i thought you were going to go for this one the way you were talking <laughs> about it because you didn't put too much contradictory stuff in there but i was just going to say sorry before you get onto your part that the one thing that did really make me stop and think was that magnetism bit mm. yeah that's unusual but there could be other explanations for that as well. I pretty much came up with the same conclusion you did. Mm. And the fact that he says it's possible it could have been remote controlled, I was like, that is a possibility. And also the fact that they would have been testing new tech. Just because it doesn't have a tail doesn't mean that it can't be new tech and it can't fly. Mm -hmm. So that was my thinking as well. Military tech. Because, and... Obviously, I also believe that he saw something because at no point does he come out and say, I saw an alien. Yeah. He comes out and says, I saw something. I think it could be from our world, but there's also the possibility that it's not. Yeah, Kenny, I was surprised at how logical he came across. He might be one of the most credible people we've covered and he himself thinks that it was military. Pretty much sums it up for me. Indeed. Thank you for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed this week's ride. And some of you may have got the answer you've been craving. Some of you didn't get the answer you were craving. But it doesn't mean that it won't be coming at some point. Just like Kenny's beat down. (laughs) What are you saying, Kenny? You ain't got nothing. DOA, smash. I'll mash you up, son. Son! (laughs) Fight night, you name it. Uh, Remember... The truth is up there. Hash tag probe. Fuck you up, Kenny. (laughs) Jesus.